welcome to the Deuce Podcast. I am Bradley. And I am a Jeremy. And we are doing episode 78, Jeremy. 78? 78. Better late than never. We are doing National Treasure Book of Secrets. I think yeah. it's called National yeah. Treasure Book of Secrets. There's no two in this, is there? Nope. Just National Treasure Book of Secrets. Correct. My favorite Harry Potter movie. <laughs> <laughs> the Nicolas Cage vehicle. Yes. Uh, the Walt Disney movie. Which I think was just... That's your treasure. Well, they, they were making like Pirates of the Caribbean and other movies right. like that. I think this was supposed to be for that Hall of Presidents ride. I don't... Come on. <laughs> hey. Revitalize that property. Uh, some things about this movie. It is a sequel to the first National Treasure movie. Very appropriate. Uh, Bruce Greenwood plays the president in this movie. Inappropriate. He's Canadian. He's Canadian. I don't know why he's playing the president of the United States, but I guess it's better than nothing. It, Bruce Greenwood's pretty suave. I think that's I think that's fair. I think that's why. <laughs> uh, some people that uh, come back are John Voight. Yep. Some people that surprise us and and uh, 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 decide to show up in this movie include um, Helen Mirren. Yes. As Nicolas Cage's mom. Yep. Dr. Emily Gates. Dr. Emily Gates. Emily Appleton Gates. Emily Appleton Gates? Yeah. She related to Larry Appleton? Yeah. Cousin mm. Larry. It's her cousin. Cousin Larry Appleton. So, yeah, they haven't seen each other in a while, so we call them perfect strangers, don't you think? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is exactly correct. Do you know, uh, do you have anything else about this movie that you want to talk um, about? No, but uh, I know that it, uh, so the first film came out, huge success, um, which is why they came back and did this one. Now, they were going to, I think it, like, I think it, it got, like, it was $220 million in North America, yeah, $237 million in other territories. Yeah, like, it, it was a huge hit. Yeah. And then the, and then the second one, it even grossed more money. Yeah. So you figured, why wouldn't they do a third movie, you say? Well, folks, that's when we started getting a lot of the uh, the Avengers movie, the Marvel movies. So uh, the Disney were uh, they were kind of focusing on the Marvel movies, would you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now um, this fir- this film did earn two Razzie Award nominations. Really? Yep. Uh, worst actor for Nicolas Cage. Okay. Uh, and worst supporting actor for John Voight. Now they also were nominated. I think I don't know if it was at the same time. But they also received Worst Actor nominations for Ghost Rider and Next for Nicolas Cage and Bratz the Movie, September Dawn, and Transformers for John Voight. Uh, but they but lost... Nothing, nothing is bad as John Voight in, in Anaconda, but it's so great bad. Oh, he's, so terrible. he was bad in... Tra- I don't know. I thought he's pretty bad in Transformers. Uh, but terrible they both bad. lost to Eddie Murphy in Norbit. There you go. There you go. I thought you were going to say Pluto Nash. How dare you? <laughs> it's a it's a well-known fact For that, I, that I love. Know, Jeremy loves the movie The Adventures of Pluto Nash. I don't know why. He's made me watch that 500 times. <laughs> he saw it once on HBO but and it then felt bought like it on 500 DVD. times. One, and then bought it on DVD. One time in that movie is feels like 500 times. I I enjoyed it more before I watched it with you because you ruined the illusion that There's it was no, good for me. I'm I'm not a phony. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. And you know what else is not phonies? What's that? The No Phony Podcast Network. That makes sense. I'm a good, you know, I I, I put that in there. But good segue. They I was gonna say, they call it a segue. Ooh, I'm riding my segue just like Paul Blart Mall Cop. <laughs> anyway, exactly like <laughs> The No Phony Podcast is a podcast network that, that yes. has tons of podcasts, very different that you can choose from, including our podcast, uh, Miles and Crawford, uh, the MC Variety Hour, it's one of my faves, um, the release, The Clowns, 
A little sketch comedy show. Yep. Some sports. Yep. BS3 Sports and Music, BS. Bats and Balls podcast. Bats and balls. You want uh, some, some Bible? Some you can you can you know have have a that fresh show? take fresh, fresh take, take on, on the, the Bible. Bible. Yeah. Everything. Bibleish. Yeah. There you go. And so check out them, shall we? Yes. Check out all the podcasts that you want. It's a smorgasbord of podcasts. Smorgasbord. Uh, the no smorgasbord. The no phony podcast network. So check them out. But you know what, Jeremy? Yeah. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hmm. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hi, we're the Grave Girls from Grave Girls Podcast. I'm your host, Hawthorne. And I'm Amaryllis. Every week we watch a different horror film, and I find a scary story that goes with it that will definitely leave you shaken in your boots. And if you aren't wearing boots, my true crime case and murder will scare the pants off you. And then you'll just be naked, and that's just that's just a fun time. So listen to us on SoundCloud and iTunes. And follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Don't forget to check out our website at grave-girls.com. We love you all in case we die. Bye! And we're back! We are back. Back, back, back. Welcome back. back. Woo, we hope you enjoyed that commercial break. Woo! All right. Oh my gosh, are you okay? Yeah. All right. Are you? <laughs> I am okay. I'm just crazy because I was thinking about the time you made me watch Pluto Nash. Oh, that'll do it. That will do it. <laughs> that was my second <laughs> second favorite, Rosario Dawson. What, what's his name? Crazy Pants Quaid. Uh, Randy Quaid is a giant bald robot. Oh, God, he is in that. Oh, don't make me relive that. Yeah. Oh. I know, it just, it just hit me. We are not doing that movie. We are no. doing National Treasure Book of Secrets. Correct. Which is the uh, third in the volume of uh, Harry Potter movies, correct? I keep saying Harry Potter because it was always like Chamber of Secrets. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. But the Chamber of Secrets was the second one there, Not the too. Book of Secrets. It's cha- yeah, it was the second one, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it was, I think. Should we drop the deuce on this? Yeah, we definitely should. Yep. Okay. So, uh... The year was 1865. The year was 1865. It was. Um, so it's basically... It's a wonderful year. The, the movie starts off. It's April 15th, 1865. Uh, it's just like a few days, obviously, after the end of the Civil War. Right. Um, so John Wilkes Booth and one of his famous conspirators, Michael O'Laughlin, enter a tavern uh, in Washington, D.C., and go to they they go to the back and they find this man who's like working. This is a nice looking tavern for that time. Yeah, it I looks mean, pretty it seedy. But swanky. You think it's pretty swanky? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> but there's uh, there's a man who's by a fire, kind of working in his books, and uh, we learn that that man is Thomas Gates. I am Thomas Gates, the ancestor of uh, Benjamin Gates. Yes. So um, they give Thomas Gates a diary, and uh, the the uh, it's John Wilkes Booth's diary, and he says, "Hey, there's a uh, can you train or can like you decode code, this? Right? Yeah, decode it or whatever." And he goes, "Well, it might be this kind of a cipher. I don't know." And like he kind of sent his son out of the room, but he's like, "I don't know." Um, well, I think it's a Playfair cipher, and he says, but I need, like, a code word or code phrase. Yeah, so, you know, the code phrase was to kill Lincoln, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, it was the debt that all men pay. That's right. And so... And that's what I had to pay from watching Pluto Nash. <laughs> a debt. The debt that all men pay. Death. Death, yeah. For watching Pluto Nash. Death and taxes. It was April 15th, by the way. But go yeah, on. it was. Uh, so the um, basically uh, Booth says, hey, I'll, I'll be right back. And he uh, he takes off. And so he's heading out to obviously assassinate President Lincoln. Do you think if like John Wilkes Booth went to a restaurant and they were like table or booth, he'd be like, no, I'm booth. 
Table booth. Correct. Cor- correct. <laughs> Your table booth. <laughs> correct. No, the uh so Thomas deciphers the code and realizes that this is uh these men are members of the Knights of the Golden Circle, uh, which was like a group of Confederate sympathizers who thought they were kind of like aristocrats. Mm. And so he realizes, we oh we don't shit. Have, we don't have any of those guys anymore. Uh, no, no, they're all gone. We we successfully... We got rid of them. We, we got rid of every last Along one. Along with racism, we got rid of them. Yeah, it's gone. We're post, post-racial America. Yep. Um, so... The he realizes, oh shit, these guys are Confederate sympathizers, and he hears like all of a sudden there's a commotion. They start chasing everybody out because President Lincoln has been assassinated, and so he's like, oh no! So he rips the pages out of the diary to go throw it in the fire, and as he uh, he throws it in the fire, it uh, doesn't go all the way up. It only burns part of it, uh, like part of the codes and everything. But the the guy shoots uh, Thomas Gates. So and then as he's dying, he tells his son just one last thing, and that's the debt that all men pay. Uh, one nice thing. One nice thing. You really, our uh, last name's Columbo. Yeah. So now flash forward to. Uh, ben Gates, uh, so Thomas Gates' great great grandson, uh, he's giving a lecture uh, at the uh, like a civilian heroes conference, talking about his great great grandfather. So he's going through, he's telling the story about how he, uh, you know, he helped to, you know, catch the the Knights of the Golden Circle or whatever, and like. You know, how he was assassinated for helping, uh, trying to stop them. Uh, but that in the last moment, he saved many more people because he burned those pages. Sure. Um, so while he's talking, there's uh, there's this kind of black market antique dealer, Mitch Wilkinson, who is played by uh, Ed Harris. Ed Harris. Yep. So he shows up and he's... He challenges Ben Gates. Uh, again, Ben Gates played by Nicholas Cage. Nick Nick Cage. Nick Cage. Um, so he challenges him and says, you know, hey, uh, the, uh, you know, what if I told you that that was all bull crap? Like, that's not how that happens. So he brings up one of the 18 missing pages of John Wilkes' Booth's diary, and it has Thomas Gates' name written on it, and so he, with the list of other conspirators. Uh, so they thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know. So he was one of the conspirators, and Ben is saying, nope, that's not possible. Um, but he insists that he wants to see it and test it to figure out what's going on, and so they're looking through it. And it has these Latin names next to everybody about, like, people who are getting the horses. It has horse written next to him. Uh, and next to his father or his great-great-grandfather's, it has the word for mastermind in Latin. And he's like, oh, so, like, he planned all of this. And he's uh-huh. like, that's not possible. And so they think that's that, well, maybe it means... Oh, they think that he's the mastermind. Behind yeah. That, that's or... what... His favorite board game was Mastermind. What's Mastermind? Mastermind. You ever played Mastermind? No. It was like uh, Mastermind was where you have these pegs, right? And they're yeah. Color pegs, and you choose different colors and the way that you place them, and then you put a uh, something over them so the other person doesn't know, and then they have to guess what order and what color that those pegs are in. Oh. And so they 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 guess and then. If you get it right, part parts of it right, you either put a red or like a white peg where it's at, so you know like that's the right color or that's that's the right um, area where it's supposed to be. That's mastermind. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, mastermind. Jeez. Yeah, no clue. Anyway, um, <laughs> so they they think he's the mastermind behind this. Uh, Benjamin points out that, hey, maybe this just means that he's like 
he's like the genius or something where he's supposed to crack the code. That's what they were using him right. for. He could have wrote Operation. Maybe he was a, he liked the game Operation. Maybe that's what it should have been. Maybe that's what it should be. Or Trouble. Yep. Risk. Or, or Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. or Pictionary. That Connect been Four. Good. Connect Four. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, um, they go and they start checking it out and they realize, they're like, sorry, Ben, it looks like your great-great-grandfather was in on this. So he heads home and he talks to his father. Uh, and it looks like he, he's kind of fallen on hard times. He lives with his dad. Um, you know, and, and last time we saw him, he had some gorgeous house with uh, with Abigail, played by Diane Kruger. So at the end of the first movie, he had this. How do I know? Where do I know her from besides these movies? Do you know this? I don't know. From this? Uh, she's German, so I never really knew. She is German. That's why, like, I never understood because, you know, she has a, an American accent, obviously. She was in the movie Troy. She was Helen of Troy. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks. I really don't Could know you pick that a movie much I've seen. How about how about Wishy uh, and Pluto Nash? She was in Inglorious Bastards. Oh, she was. Yeah. Was she then? Uh, Bridget. I thought you were gonna tell me she was the Inglorious Bastard. No, she was Bridget von Hammersmark. She was. Oh no, she wasn't that. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. No, and she's been in some other things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she was in an episode of Fringe. Or maybe the movie Fringe. No, it was an episode of Fringe. Okay. Uh, she played Miranda Green in like the Clue episode, or a Clue type episode. Anywho, <laughs> so, um, so he's not there with her, um, which is odd, but he's staying with his dad, and his dad has like junk everywhere. It looks like Thomas just or right. Benjamin put his whole like the entirety of his house in his dad's place i did read some uh behind the scenes this is the same uh house that they used in father of the bride and father of the bride too nice yeah and when you watch father i because i remember watching father the bride a lot i don't know why i watched that movie yeah all the time but I, i did and that is that's the that's the house yeah so if we watch father the bride too the house will be the repeat offender. Yes, the house will be the repeat offender. Correct. Nice. Um, so, uh, Ben tells his dad that he's going to go get uh, Abigail to let him look at the pages. So, he drives out. Uh, well, first off, they're going to steal her pass to go get it. So, like, he picks up Riley. Uh so, uh, Riley Poole, uh, who again is uh, played by Justin Bartha. Yes. Who well, I don't really see him anymore in anything. He used to be very popular back in the day. Uh, you know, I don't even remember seeing him in that much back in the day. Really? He was in that situation comedy. Yeah. With uh, What's His Bucket. Where the, 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 the New Normal. Couple. Yeah, the, the New normal. normal. Yeah. Yeah. But I really don't remember him in much. Uh, he was in Gigli. Okay, but I've never seen that. So was he in Pluto Nash? No, he wasn't. Okay. Um, so Riley, in the meantime, has written this book that has like all these conspiracy theories in sure. it. Sure, yeah. And, of course, he says that he's one of the people who found the treasure, and they're like, you're Benjamin Gates? He, of course, he has no notoriety, so he's irritated. No, I'm the guy that helps Benjamin Gates. Yeah. I'm his partner. Not but his. you notice, like these movies, it's it's very much like the Jack Bauer syndrome, or the one guy on um, CSI where they're like, everyone knows that guy. Yeah. Oh, you're Benjamin Gates. Yeah. You're Jack Bauer. I know you. Yeah. I'm like, no, come on. Must be what everybody who worked with Don Ballard felt like. <laughs> um. So. Uh, Riley goes outside, or this girl is like, hey, um, do you drive a, a red Porsche? And he's like, yeah. And she goes, oh, it's getting towed. And so he's like running, trying to stop it. Well, it gets towed because he owes back taxes on it. 
apparently he uh, owed shitloads of taxes and you know there's they make a joke about the IRS taking everything that he has um but they're like well hey we can you know help me out it'll make you feel better so he uh he follows Ben to uh to the old estate uh and they're going to get Abigail's pass to go into the lab to use the imaging uh and they don't want her to find out cuz obviously they're on the outs uh, so they get to the house, and uh, when they get there, Abigail shows up. Uh, so she's still in the home. She shows up along with a guy who she's going out with on a date, uh, Connor, uh, who's like a, one of the White House press secretaries oh, or something, yeah. played by Ty Burrell. Ty Burrell, of all people. This yeah. had to be before Modern Family. It was, yeah. Because Ty Burrell was more of like a bit player. He would he would show up in sitcoms, yeah, here and there. But he was always like the the background guy, yeah. kind of guy, the, the second banana. You would yes. say. He actually, um, when uh, the Hulk movie came out for uh, through Marvel, he was in that too. So I know that was like before he really took off. Yeah, that's true. Um, but. Uh, Anyway, so he she, uh, she shows up with Connor, and they realize that Ben is there. Uh, so uh, he's like, hey, I need you to help me. Uh, they basically send uh, Connor away. They go, and they start looking at, at everything. Uh, and while they're examining the pages, they realize there's something on the back side of... Uh, the back side of the page. And so it is, they flip it, and they see the Playfair cipher on there. So they're attempting to decode it, and they talk to, uh, they talk to Thomas Gates, uh, his dad, or excuse me, Patrick Gates, his dad, uh, and say, you know, tell us about something, because we're trying to figure out what this code might be. And he talks about where uh, his grandfather told him the story about how, you know, his father, you know, looked at him in the eyes and said, uh, the debt that all men pay. And that's when they realized it was death. So they use that as the code, and that's what that's what triggered the cipher. So. Okay. So those were the five letters that they needed to crack it. Sure. Um, so they realized that the uh, the code led them to um, it was like the twin ladies or something like that. Yes, yes, which is a restaurant, right? Yeah, that's okay. right. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> it took them to a restaurant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> National treasure. <laughs> The hunt for the <laughs> boobs of secrets. <laughs> oh my God! So it's um, like two ladies, <laughs> and so what they mean by uh, ladies I mean the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. So they said, okay, well, or it was uh, Lavalle's ladies. Lavalle's ladies. Yeah. yeah. And so they were like, oh, okay. Uh, so that's what it was. So they're like, okay, let's let's think about this. And so, uh, they go to France because. Uh, Edouard Laboulay, the guy who, uh... So isn't there, like, three... There's three Statue of Liberty, right? Or yes, there okay. are. Yeah, there's there's one in, I think it's the U.S., Germany, and then in, in like, Germany and whatever gardens, and then there's one in France. France, yeah. Uh, so, because he made, he made the one in France and then gave the other two as gifts to the others. Right. Uh, so... But they went to find, uh, they said, well, there's only one he calls his lady, and that's the uh, that's one in France. Hey, lady! Lady, I'm Edward Lobelay! <laughs> Lobelay! Anyway, um, so they go to Paris, uh, and so they are flying a, like a drone a helicopter, drone, drone, yeah. trying to get a good visual of it, and they finally get a picture 
Um, of course, at the, the same time, a couple of uh, Parisian bicycle cops show up, uh, and they are, you know, are asking him what they're doing, and so he's telling them, and of course they're very, they're very like kind and into it and like talking to them, uh, and so Riley gets his drone back, and they're talking to them about the, uh, they're talking to them about the uh this clue which it says something about re- the uh, yeah something about the resol- the twins that are resolute the or, twins of resolute yes and so they d- say hey do you know that's the uh they're the resolute desks that were made no it seems odd like okay we're we're talking a lot of like la- like couple like twin twin desks and like different versions of the statue of liberty do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it feels like this should be kind of part of the plot too, as well. Like maybe uh, Ed Harris is his long lost brother that we don't know about. We don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I feel like that could have been something. That there's right? a lot having to do with twins and twins doubles or something, and... right? No, that's nothing. That's just part of part of the clues. Well, it's not like Wilkinson's coming up with the clues. The clues are, you know, almost a hundred years old. Well, I'm just saying. Oh, that's true. You know. I'm just saying. And it could have all been part of the conspiracy theory. That it was always meant to be the brothers. <laughs> um, but, well, in a way, you know, there's some similarity there. Um, anyway. Yeah, in a way, there's like, yeah, it's mirrored. Yeah. And like so, mirror. so along these lines, uh, while all this has been going on, so like once, once Benjamin got the... Uh, the code, the the cipher decoded. Uh, he called Abigail to tell her, and Wilkinson was there. He overheard it, and was like, "Did he say La Boulet? And then realized well, what was going on. Didn't he also like uh, break into uh, John Boy's home? Did that happen yet? No, not yet. Okay, I thought that that, that happened. No. But he did manage to, at some point here, like, he copies, well, as soon he does that. Okay. But I think he, like, uh, well, first they go to Paris, and they basically follow them to England, because that's where one of the resolute desks is, is in Buckingham Palace. In Buckingham Palace, yeah. So Wilkinson right. follows them there. Um, And so the... Uh, Ben and Riley go to infiltrate the palace. Riley is in the bathroom, like, setting up shop with this, like, elaborate, you know, computer in hacking bathroom, software. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He's, like, Felicity Smoke in, like, Arrow, where he's, like, yeah. you know, the, the tech guy trying to help him yeah. get through it all. Yep. And so Ben's going to try to get his way through. Um, He's basically, like... uh drinking a little bit of alcohol and stuff like that and dipping it behind his ears and everything just so it sounds, uh, or so they think he's drunk. Right, and at this point in the movie, we're not getting weird Nick, Nick Cage. No. Nick Cage has been pretty somber and pretty, yeah. like, relaxed. Uh, not after this scene. Well, and he was, in the last movie, too, he was pretty... Right, but this scene sure. kind of where we're like, yeah, yeah. here we get some crazy Nick Cage. Cage it up. Cage this up. Yeah. And Do so it, cage it up. So he's in the Buckingham Palace and then Abigail shows up. Yeah. I don't know how. Yeah. Well she's I think she he said that's where he's going and she's like, What are you doing? And so she's like, Wait, are you planning on robbing this place? Like she's all of a sudden like, Holy shit, what is going on? Uh true yeah Yeah. and so they are uh they are it seems really convenient to have her there yeah there's no real reason for her to be there well i think and she's like they argued with each other yeah she's warning you about uh wilkinson too okay but you can't call you can't pick up the phone and call or no okay have you ever seen him with a cell phone that's true i never have I think like once or twice maybe, huh. but I mean they do it as part of the plot points. Yeah, but that's about it. No, the um. But yeah, you're right. At some point there, 
uh, Patrick's Patrick Gates' house has been broken into. Yeah. And they clone his cell phone. And they phone. clone his, the cell phone. Yeah, which yeah. is how they track his whereabouts. Yeah, so he has to be on the cell phone. Yes. Yeah. You know. Um. So. Uh, Ben, and Abigail make this huge scene, uh, and then are taking taken away, uh, and locked up, in like kind of a storage area, with uh in Buckingham Palace. Which is exactly where he wanted to go. Yes. And so when they walk away... Genius cage. There you go. Cage in a cage. <laughs> Action. Um, so the... When he walks away... the uh, By the way, the, the guy who plays... Uh, the, the man who takes him away... Is like this British actor who's been on numerous things. He used to host like a show about the American Revolution. What? Uh, Are yeah. You and he was in... Um, he was in The Patriot with uh, Mel Gibson. And he gets one line in this movie? He got like three. Uh, he also uh, was in the show Babylon 5. Well, he wasn't in that show. There was a spinoff show okay. uh, where they had techno mages, where it's like people who do magic, but really it's like complex technology things. Geek. And he played that. That's why I was like, oh, that guy? Yeah, he's been in tons of stuff. Nerd. <laughs> but got three lines. Um, so What was that show called? The Babylon 6? No, it was... Um, I can't remember. Okay. Uh, it Was it called it, Keep Babbling On? No, it tanked so bad. So they were on a, like a little ship, and when they were like, uh-oh, we're under attack, we can't keep up with it, they had this lady who would lower into this like virtual reality tank thing and what? so she would be fighting what? she'd be punching and kicking and that was making like a the avatar guns fire kind of huh like an avatar kind of thing or like a you know, do you know what i mean yeah she she would go in it and she'd be like we would see her punching ships and like kicking little ships out of the way but it was really the guns were shooting them what yeah it was really it was really bad. Okay, let's keep going. On anyway, this anyway um, so uh, they go to, they're talking about the Resolute desks. Turns out these desks were made of, there was like a ship called the Resolute uh, that wrecked uh, or was like stuck in the ice or something like that. They, they made, I didn't know that. yeah, they yeah. made, uh, I mean, that's interesting. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they made, Two desks out of them. Yeah, one went to uh, to the president to the White House to the White House, and the other one went to Buckingham Palace sure. to the Queen. But these were actually made by uh, like a famous like a maker of puzzle boxes. Evidently, yeah. Is, is that true in real life? I doubt it. I doubt that too. Yeah. But it, uh, but I like it. Yeah, I do too. Uh, and so like. It was actually really interesting. They they're at the queen's desk and they're trying to figure it out. Uh, ben is like laying under the desk, and as he opens yeah. them up, he realizes there's numbers on the drawers. Yeah, they see numbers on the drawers, so they're they're, they're trying to guess. Yeah, so little, you open the four drawers up, you know, like a lock, to, like yeah, for your suitcase. To, yeah, like a combination, and so they guess whatever year it was for Queen Victoria. It was like eighteen something. The desk oh, desk opens. And, uh, or like a little thing pops little out. Panel pops you out. turn it, push it in, another one pops out. And you keep doing that until a like side, like I drawer thought, opens I up. I thought like that was fucking cool. I wanted that desk was like fucking that. cool. I want a desk like that. Yeah. You imagine you put your weed in there. I'm not saying I smoke weed. I'm just saying you put your weed in there. You could. You could definitely put. You that could do in anything. There. You put anything you want in there. Yeah. You know? And you would need that to relax after you had to go through the trouble of like <laughs> going through a puzzle box to get to your weed. To get to your weed, I'm just saying. Why can't I just have my weed? Anyway. So. Um, I want one of these Resolute desks, Jeremy. I want <laughs> it now. I want it now. Um, so they they find this ancient wooden plank. And Abigail points out like. This is like 400 or more years yeah, old. I don't know why you would hide that in there, but whatever. Yeah. Well, th there was a point to it. Okay. So okay. it has this ancient writing on it, these pictographs. Um, and so uh, Ben 
recognizes it. He, uh, well, he, he thinks he recognizes them, but he needs to figure it out for sure. And so he is taking off with everybody, and he sees Wilkinson and his guys there. And so they're like, oh, shit. So they go running. So they're driving around England like crazy uh, with Wilkinson in pursuit. So sure. big, long, high-speed chase. Big, long, high-speed chase. You don't really need that. Yeah. Um, Nothing spectacular. <laughs> and then they... Uh, they're driving on the wrong side of the road, though. Were they? Yeah, on the sidewalk, remember, for a little <laughs> bit of it. It's true. Um, so then he, he was like, hold on. I need to do something. So he, they run a red light, and he holds the plank up so that they get a picture of it. Right. And uh, Riley hacks into the... Uh, to the network and goes and finds the picture for them. Right. So he throws it all out. Yeah, he, th- he throws the plank out because that throws Wilkinson and his guys off Gets and they get away. Gets fine for littering in France. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, they get away. So, and they realize that, like, hey, the glyphs are partial. They just need to figure this out. So Ben, uh, he talks to Patrick, talks to his dad, who arranges for them to go and talk to uh, Ben's mother. Ben's mom. Yeah, Emily Ben's Appleton Gates. And, you know, related to Larry Applegate. Correct. Right. Okay. Appleton. Apple, Appleton, whatever. Yes. Uh, to translate, because she, coincidentally, is like... Coincidentally. Is like a... a <laughs> Native the, American... Like, yes, she's like she's the foremost awful. authority on Native American and why culture she be? That's and language. Same. And that's what they think the plank is, so that works out well. Um, like sometimes I'm just like, really, all these like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all these no, things just no, happen I, to coincide. I totally get it, and it and it gets worse in this movie. Yeah, it does. Um, so, uh, she translates the symbols, and but points out that some of the glyphs are partial, meaning that there's another plank that has to be hidden. Somewhere. So we all know it's a twin, so it's got to be in the president's desk. Yes. So now they got to break into the Oval Office. Yeah. How are they going to do that, Jeremy? Um. So Ben uh, and Abigail go to the because Abigail was invited to the Easter egg roll. Right. Ty Burrell's character. Yeah. By by, by Connor, who's coincidentally a, who's a curator for the White House. Yeah. He's just um, a curator. And, uh, which is great. I think we see Sean Spicer in a bunny suit. We do. We saw Sean when he Spicer was that guy in the bunny suit. Um, and so they, they talk him into seeing the Oval Office and they really like, I feel bad for Connor because, uh, cause they're using him. Yeah. yeah. I do too. Because Ben is like, I told Look, her you wouldn't be able to do it'd this. It'd be different if like Connor was an asshole, but he's not that bad of a no, guy. He's a great guy in this. Uh, <laughs> so I feel really bad. Uh, so they say, okay, let's, uh, let's go. And so she pretends to lose an earring. They are, you're, you're already in the wall, but it's like, they're like, ah, they do this whole trick. Like, ha, ah, I bet he can't do it. Yeah. Oh no, don't ask that. I bet he can't get get uh, show us the Oval Office. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I can. He's a curator for, like, I don't think he can, can he? Like, it seems very coincidental. If he, he shows it. people on certain tours, he'd be able to. I guess he could. I yeah. don't know. It just seems very odd. No, I, it makes sense. I don't know. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, so, the, so she pretends to lose her earring. They're on the ground looking around. And he... Uh, yeah, Gates is, is by the desk. Yeah, he goes by the desk. Doing the whole thing. And he's doing the puzzle box piece. Yeah. And uh, the first piece pops out. Yeah. And uh, Abigail realizes she's going to get his attention. you notice when he was on the ground, when he was on the ground, like when Gates was on the ground, he also saw a cigar and a blue dress. Ew. I'm just saying. Oh. <laughs> uh, and knee pads. And the... Knee pads. Um, and he put them on. <laughs> all, of, all of it. <laughs> oh, come on. Anyway. Oh, they did. <laughs> um, so, 
so they're looking around. And Abigail's kind of playing like the uh, like damsel in distress, which means that Connor is trying really hard to help her. Yeah, and she's kind of flashing a little cleavage and batting her eyes. Yeah. and you know, because they kiss too. Yeah. Well, no, she kisses them, them to distract. Yeah. Leading them on. I don't to, care. to distract from everything. Well, so he goes to push the second. Like, I don't care if they're trying to find a plank. Pushes from, the from, first from Poppin thing. Language. Pushes the second one in, yeah. and it opens, and it's gone. Yes, it's gone. And uh, instead, there is this symbol that's stamped into it that is. Um, yeah, it, it, it looks like it the looks presidential, like the presidential seal. But it's not because he's holding something. It's got a scroll in its yeah, talon. Scroll. And so and they're like, "What is that symbol?" Yeah, they're like, "I don't get this." Or he goes, "Well, it's got the presidential seal in there." And Riley goes, "No, it doesn't. That's not the presidential seal." Uh, and he's like, "Haven't like, well, you read what my is book?" It? Yeah. Haven't you read my book? And they're all look, like, look, uh, Riley, no one's read your book. That's, <laughs> why, that's why your car got confiscated, okay? Yeah. You can't pay your taxes. You can't do anything. So he said that there is a book called the Book of Secrets, which is a contains all these... Uh, <gasps> that's what this is called, the Book of Secrets. It's true. It only took an hour to get to there. But, <laughs> but it, it contains all these things that are for the president's eyes only. Yeah. Uh, so like you know the truth behind the JFK assassination, yeah, Watergate, Area, yeah, blah blah blah, yeah, all these conspiracies. And so is the uh, book real? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, and so but that's supposedly like they had a a thing that they got under the Freedom of Information Act, and that was actually stamped on there, which people were like, oh, that must. What is this? And they found out that it was a book of secrets. Gotcha. Um. So. They said, well, there's only one person who can tell us that then. Right. The president. Uh, so in true Nick Cage fashion, he says, we have to kidnap the president well, of the United States. They're like, well, we can get a meeting with him, but that's going to take forever. Yeah. We got to do this quick. Uh, we're going to think we're going to have to get a meeting with him. So uh, they they're like, we need to get this party to his birthday party that's coming up to Mount Vernon. And so they call around and they book up every other venue forcing it to go to Mount Vernon. Yeah. And so when it goes to Mount Vernon, uh Nick Cage Ben shows up and uh basically, you know, uh, sneaks his way in. Uh when he gets in there, he has like he's like here is a map that was drawn by George Washington, you know, that of, that he shows of the state of the estate. The pre- now, do we know the president's name? I do. We, do we ever know the president? He's just the president of the United States. You know um, what I mean? I don't think we ever know his name. No, I don't think we do. So here's the thing: though, this hasn't been the first time that Bruce Greenwood, Canadian Bruce Greenwood, by the way. Has played a president of the United States. He's also played president in 13 Days, where he played Kennedy, and in Kingsman, The Golden Circle. Hmm. So the little fraud did it three times. A little trifecta pull the wool over our eyes. How dare he? Canadian. Ooh. Sorry. 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 You know I'm a big Bruce Greenwood fan. I know you are. I mean, there's nowhere, man, that I would find that guy <laughs> anywhere. I love Bruce Greenwood. Anyway. I know you do. Anyway, um, so I love that he's pres- the president of the United States. He, but he's so perfect as he's the president. He's so perfect though. in it. Oh my God. Uh, he's he's like that authoritative yet suave yes. kind of. It's perfect. Anyway, everything that a president is, right? Uh huh. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. So <coughs> he uh he he's like Ben's like, hey, I got this map. Right. You know, and of course he's like, I know you. Like he was into like he's a, was like a history major or like sure. historical cartography or something like that. He in college. loves Washington. Yes, and so he loves Washington, so they're excited about it. And he goes, I noticed there's this like little hidden spot over here. Ooh, should we check it out? Treasure hunting the Ben Gates. Yeah. Well, he goes, we we should check it out. President blah blah blah. Yeah, President blah blah. And so, <laughs> uh, the president and him. 
sneak off to go find this thing. And so, and it is like Ben is like, oh look, uh, if you look at this picture, this is different. This is different, and they find a secret passage. And so they're walking yeah, through this. Even the credits say Bruce Greenwood, the president. Yeah, right. So they're walking through this secret. Are they going to the secret passage? And Ben seals it up behind them. And of course, the president's like, "What are you going to do?" He's like, "Well, the exit's this way. We need to go this direction." And he's like, you're not going to keep me from doing whatever it is? And so he's like, nope. He's like, you're the president. I'm not going to do this. I just need time to talk to you. Yeah. And is trying to talk to him about the Book of Secrets. Um, and so they, uh, they get out. They basically walk all the way through. Uh, and so he says, you know what? Uh, if If you get it, we're going to be okay if you figure all this out. If you don't, there's nothing I can do for you, and it's going to yeah. be a federal offense. So basically, he says the Book of Secrets is over here. Yeah. You're going to have to remember this code. Yep. And, and also, take a look at what page? 47. 47. Yeah. And so he sends him to the Library of Congress. Right. Uh, so they go to the Library of Congress, and... Uh, it's it's actually kind of cool when they're looking for it. So they go to like this private, like the presidential reserve section. And so they're walking around in there and they don't find the code that they gave them. It's actually uh, in a little secret compartment, like a secret safe above yeah. the other books. The Dewey Decimal System or something. Yeah. Right? And yeah. it's like, where is it at? It's got to be in the middle yeah. of between these two books. So they but take it's, the books it's out. not there. But and above it, there's a little yeah. safe. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought it was thought it was interesting. Yeah. So uh, in the book, Ben sees a picture of the missing plank, so he has that. He can have somebody look at it. Right. Uh, and an entry by President Coolidge, keep cool Coolidge, uh, <laughs> who found the plank in 1924, uh, had it destroyed, and then commissioned was it Lux, uh, Gutzon Borglum? The to carve Mount Rushmore to erase the map's landmarks in order to protect a treasure. Uh, and so in the meantime, uh, Agent S- uh, Sadusky, so again played by uh, Harvey Keitel, yeah, who is Ben's friend, he gets a call that Ben has, you know, kidnapped the president. And so he's like, oh, my God. So he follows him to the library. Uh, and so Abigail, uh, Riley, and Ben get away. They evade capture. All this seems so coincidental, so far-fetched. But I'm along for the ride. Yeah, oh, Why I'm too. Why am I along for this I'm ride? Too. For this stupid, cheesy movie that I quite enjoy. Well, the thing is always like, and it was like this in the first one. It was, it was... It was like half historical fact and half conspiracy theory. Right. And like but somewhere was, in between it, you come with this like beautiful... But look, the conspiracy theories aren't like, you know, bogging the plot down to where it's like, ugh. No, it never you know does. I mean? Oh, the earth is flat or some stupid conspiracy theory like that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, I think part of it is because we know the things that they're referencing... And it seems yeah. endearing. Yeah, that's true. Like when I'm like, oh, the Declaration of Independence, right. I've seen that. I know that. Yeah. The Statue of Liberty. Oh, wait, there's three of them? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so now we're on to Mount Rushmore. Yes. So Speaking of things that we know. Yes, indeed. So uh, they managed to escape. Uh, so, um, and they had sent... They were like, well, we need to, uh, we need to talk to uh, Emily to see what the rest of this means, and so they sent a picture to Patrick, uh, basically to 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 get it, and so Patrick is going to go in and talk to her. In the meantime, uh, Mitch has shown up. 
and is trying to get her to translate it. She won't, but she does tell uh, Patrick, like basically gives him a code so that they know that she's in trouble, but still is able to get, you know, tell them where they need to go. So they head to Mount Rushmore. Um, they get out there, and they end up bumping into Mitch, who, of course, at this point has kidnapped Emily, brought her with them. So it turns out they're looking for Cibola, which is the, like, city of gold. Oh, I thought that was, like, a pill that you take. Cibola? I've seen that late at night. When, like, hey, are you suffering from, you know, this and this? Try some Libra. <laughs> are you suffering from painful Insomnia? diarrhea? Yeah, because I'm watching... Cibola. This. Yes, because I'm watching Give Me a Break at 3 in the morning. So, yeah, I am <laughs> suffering from insomnia. Get over it! Uh, so they... They basically are trying to find, uh, she's translated the passages, and they're trying to find at the top of Mount Rushmore, like, how to get in. Right. So they're looking around. I would around. say through Lincoln's nostril, but that's just me. Yeah, that seems like it would be the, the likely way. Uh, so they're trying to figure it out. And so it turns out, like, all these years ago, the reason that uh, that uh, Gates burn those pages was because the uh the, the knights of the golden circle or whatever it was were going to take they wanted to find the gold so that they could uh bankroll the confederate army right and it would have changed the whole course of the states the, yeah the, the yeah the civil war of the yeah. states yeah uh and it turns out that queen victoria was trying to help them because yeah. she needed the the materials that they provided hey i'll go for it yeah and so uh, so they are looking around and they're, uh, they realize if you pour water on the stone that, uh, it gets darker. So they need to look for the symbol. There's like a bird that they're supposed to look for. They splash it around and they see this like eagle that doesn't right. change colors. Uh, it says you have to like the warrior bird or whatever. You have to put your, uh, give your hand over to it or yourself over to it. So Patrick puts his hand like in the little crevice yeah, at the middle they're, of the bird. They're all taking water and they're going around Mount yeah. Rushmore, you know, places in Mount Rushmore. I think he, he sprays it on oh, uh, George Washington's teeth and it turns it uh, uh, wood. They right? turn wood. Yeah, they turn wood. They turn hit into hippo teeth. <laughs> hippo uh, teeth. And so they're they're kind of splashing it around and they see this. Patrick puts his hand in and does a little Roman holiday. Roman bit holiday, yeah, the whole where he ah! screams with his hand in there. Of course, everybody freaks out. Yeah, right. We've and he, he he Nicholas Cage laughs for a while <laughs> after that. I love Gregory Pecks. Uh, um, so, but there's a latch. He pulls it, and uh, you see this kind of chain reaction, and then uh, a like the rock rocks crack open and a door is there. Sure, we'll go. Now, whenever it. that you do these things in movies, that cool. always I don't know, like it's such a cool effect, but at the same time it right. bothers me because I'm like that's not how that would work. I don't First understand. First of all, I think at this point in the movie, I I turned to you and said, "Oh, we're watching Adult Goonies." Yeah. So that's what we're watching. So I call this uh uh National Treasure Adult Goonies. Yeah. And then second of all, um there was like a, a high school that was gonna that does their prom at Mount Rushmore every year. Yeah, and that just in real life. to do yeah. it like during uh, the filming of that, so they had to like re uh, put them somewhere else. Yeah. So Disney paid for them to have a prom somewhere else so they could film at Mount Rushmore, which is so cool that like Disney like bankrolled your prom. Well, they gave away. They gave away like. Go, go ahead. They, they gave like away like and, uh, door prizes yeah. and gift cards and. Scholarships, and scholarships stuff like that, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, but if anything, if you hate this movie, if anything that happened from this movie, yeah, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, but we are watching Adult Goonies. Yes, it is Adult Goonies. Um, <laughs> so uh, they get inside, and uh, when they get there, like it opens up, and you see like water kind of rushing through. They, uh, of course, all the ropes in there are like 400 years old, 
and this happened in the last movie too. Like everything was just tenuously held together by a rope that was hundreds of years old. And so somebody touches it, which it immediately breaks, and big stone like you know door starts to seal shut, and everybody's trapped inside. And then another door comes down. It separates uh, Patrick and Emily from everybody else. So uh, they're walking through, and they come across different traps and everything. Um, So, like, the one, it's kind of interesting. It's Mitch, Abigail, Riley, and Ben all fall on this, like, gold... Square, square platform thing. that like is on a like a ball so it would like it's on a, no it's on a like a uh, like a post like a post yeah a post thing yeah and so it's rocking so you have to balance it out so people had to go to each corner of it in to order try to, to balance keep, it. yeah yeah and so there's a ladder over to the side for you to try to get to so Abigail or first uh, Mitch is like nope I'm gonna be the first one off of this thing. And they said, okay. So they let him go. But after he goes, it breaks part of the way. Right. So then they figure out... I thought this thing was kind of cool. Yeah. In my opinion, but... Well, then they figured out, like, um, okay, we have to maneuver in a way to, like, keep it balanced. So to keep changing it up. But then they have to move back to basically create a bit bigger lever to like push yeah, Emily it, up to, it to get me out of like there. Like a, a survivor, like that show Survivor, or like one yeah. of their their, you know, yeah, things that they had to do. So a tribe thing that they had to do. Yeah. You know? So uh Abigail gets up or is trying to get up there and it looks like she's gonna fall. But Mitch comes back and grabs her hand and pulls her up. And, uh, you know, I think this is interesting because it's like he's one of those characters where you like you don't want to like him. But I also don't think he's a bad, bad he's guy. Doing, like he's doing what he thinks is right. Yeah. Which is clearing his his family's name. Yeah. Right? Or saying that, you know, um, so he's kind of the best kind of villain because he doesn't know he's a villain. Well, and in the first you know one, I mean? he yeah. thinks he's what he's doing is right. In the first one, I got the sense of, like, uh, Sean Bean was going to kill people. Right. And people you know. don't like that about this movie because they, they want, like, a they want it clear. They want a black and white, like, villain. Yeah. But I don't get a sense of, like, but I'm like Mitch that doesn't not. want people to die. No, he, I don't think so. I he's think just he's like that other treasure hunter who's less ethical. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, so he helps Abigail up. So then Ben's like, okay, well, I need Riley to go then. So uh, he gets Riley up there, and Riley's barely holding on. Uh, and the, the post that's below them is starting to crack and break. They realize that there's this, like, big stone or, like, gold, like, cylinder thing. And so they're like, hey, we're going to throw this totem down. It's going to roll. You run past it, and then you can get up. So... They managed to get up, like, right in the nick of time. They walk down, and they realize, uh, or they end up uh, shutting all the water off. They meet back up uh, to, that's, like, flowing through. They run into Mitt, or run into um, Patrick and Emily, and so they're all together again. And they end up finding the City of Gold. So they find Cibola. And all the gold that's inside there. So, and of course, Emily is just in love with all these artifacts that she's seeing. Um, oh, yeah. There's also a scene where, like, John Voight is trying to be, like, he's trying to swing across on a vine. <laughs> and he tries to swing <laughs> across. Helen and, Mirren. And he can't. And Helen Mirren's like, oh, no, I'll grab you. Whoa! And they both go swinging across. The, it's kind of awkward. Um, I really am, like... That they gave, like, John Voight and Helen Mirren this, like, well, we don't think you can do the other action. We're going to give you this goofy bit Kinda, of crap like, to do. like, that's what I feel like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Which, I think Helen Mirren could do it. I don't think John Voight could. Oh, yeah. No, Helen Mirren could kick my ass. I, I think she'd be fine. Um, 
So they find the city of gold, and while they're there, they start hearing the sound, and they start seeing water trickling. Well, the room where they shut down all the water, it's starting to give way. Like, that's too much pressure from that water, right. so it starts flooding the chamber. Under pressure. <laughs> So they realize that there is like a drain that they can get into to try to get out. So they they go underneath the main like temple piece and uh there is a uh like a like a cylinder thing you got to turn to like raise the door. But be careful because the temple god will come <laughs> and take you away if you're not careful. So it's kind of a catch 22 here. So if they raise that then all the water comes through and it floods the next chamber yeah. and sweeps everyone into it. But if they close it, the main chamber is going to flood. Uh, and so they're like, well, the only way to keep getting through is to get to the other side. And so... You forgot about the the uh, Diane chambers. I did not. Cheers. Night court. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so they're letting everybody through. And of course... Uh, they're trying to head through, and uh, Wilkinson like starts dropping the door on him, and he's like, "Nope, I will not be the last one here." He's like, "You know, he's like, you know, I'm going through there, and I'm going to get credit for this." And they're like, "Geez, what is your problem? We're trying to like survive." Right. And so Ben and Mitch start working on it, and Ben actually, uh, he props the door up and he's like, Alright, you guys, I'll go through. I'll I'll do this. He basically is gonna sacrifice himself so the rest of them can make it out. And uh so they're trying to make it out of there and something happened. The door comes down and uh the Ben runs out to go help them. Uh Mitch ends up grabbing the door like the the rotation or the the what do you call that the uh thing to rotate the door up he goes and catches it and uh Nick Cage is like I'm coming back and Mitch says nope he's like you know you got to get them through and if I let go of this you know we're all going to die basically yeah and so you can't get back up over here because you're caught in the current now because he went to go down to by the door to save them. He's like, if I open the door, you're just going to get sucked through anyway. He's like, so it looks like I'm the one who has to sacrifice myself, not you. And so Wilkinson's going to sacrifice himself because he's the best option that they have. So he's going to sacrifice himself. Ben's like, no, no, no. We'll find another way. Like, we can figure this out, man. And he goes, no, we really can't. And just push, opens it and lets them get swept through. And he closes it, and so Wilkinson has sacrificed himself. Yeah, sacrifice. But, but he did, you know, he was like, well, you know, it makes no sense for you to try to get over here and whatever. It's It's got to be me. And I was like, okay. like you know. And he said, give me credit. I want credit as part he just of this. Wants credit. I just want credit for my family. He was talking about like his family didn't have all these things. He wants he, their name to be remembered, like the Gates name. Um, and so uh, they get out, and uh, Ben clears ends up clearing his family name with a discovery, uh, and he gets cleared of all charges. And said that Ben actually saved his life. You know, kind of gives him all this credit for stuff. Ben, they said, well, who who did this? And Ben says, well, you know, us and Mitch Wilkinson, who who right. or Wilkerson, who sacrificed himself. So he gives credit to Mitch. Uh, and at the end, the president mentions the favor that he asked of Ben. Uh, when he gave him the location of the book and said, well, did you, you know, look at what was on page 47? And he says, yes, he says, you won't believe it. It's life changing. And they take off. Yeah. And so they don't say what it is. No, they don't say it. Nope. And they just leave it at that. Not even a clue. 
and then in the meantime, uh, a lady that has actually read Riley's book wants it to be autographed. Uh, and then, and so he's just like feeling on yeah, top of the he world. Found, he found the one fan in like yeah. in South Dakota. Yeah, right. Uh, but then in the end, uh, Riley gets the Ferrari back because the president says he owes him a favor. So he gave it back to him tax free. And then in the meantime, Ben and Abigail get back together. So you've been deuced. Been deuced. The end. Indeed, the so end. that's what we thought of it, but let's see what other people thought of it, shall we? Yeah. This person gave it a 7 out of 10. This is a very diverse, like, this this movie, either you hate it or you love it. There's no great area in this, I found I found when I was reading reviews. Uh, Disdressed 12 gave it a 7 out of 10. Not quite as exciting as the original. While well, I found this film to be very good, I didn't think it was quite as good as the original. The film follows the same formula as original, but takes long to get going, uh, and a bit slow going in some parts. And it wasn't quite as exciting. The first film was thrilling from almost start to finish, whereas this film wasn't. Uh, get me wrong, don't get me wrong, there are some very, very thrilling moments. Just not as many as I've hoped there was. All right, so there's that. And this person is John4323. Uh, gave it a 1 out of 10, and says, National Disgrace. Okay, so the first installment was hardly rocket science, but this was just plain awful. If you can't get past the un- unbelievable plot line and excuse the cardboard acting for most of the cast, then they, they have been a Scooby-Doo script to deal with. This city has been missing for over a thousand years. Oh, wait, there it is. But wait, uh, what... We can't get in. Hang on. It says it can see a pig playing banjo. Well, there's a full moon from the door can open. Hang on. I have such a pig. How convenient. This is total crap for mindless idiots. And I like mindless films. If you value your time and know of your life, save yourself two hours and miss this garbage. Uh, um... So we we've talked about that where there there <laughs> is I mean there is there is some truth to that yeah there is a little bit of there, truth like, to that they oh your your so mother bad. happens to be like the foremost authority on this language that just happens to pop out of a desk of things that you're you know I mean like it's that that element is there this is a popcorn these are popcorn movies they're meant to be just enjoyed just yeah shut up and enjoy them and just well get not over even the fact, not you know even I mean? that it's just like. That's how fucking movies work, man. I know, right? That's, have you never seen a You've damn seen movie any before? Movie where you're like, oh, like that's what plot is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We have things to come. Run. Things come back. Things circle around. Right. And while this one is a little like, you know, cheesier than the others, it's, it's, a, it's a family movie. Like, come on. Yeah, you, that's true too. This is something you see as a freaking family. Right. There, yeah, you're right. It is a very family movie. There's no really. There's not that many much cussing in it. Yeah. There's no vi- there's no blood. No. So yeah, it's a very family oriented movie. Yeah. Well, I'm not oriented, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean it's family friendly. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you need to knock the movie. Look, it's No. Th- is it mindless? Th- yeah, kind of, but it's fun. I don't think it's mindless even. I learned stuff from this movie. Yeah, I mean I mean the the first national treasure and this one. Both of them, I'm not going to lie. There's things where I was like, is that true? And then looked it up and was like, holy shit, that was true. Or or it's not. And But that was cool that they had that in the Resolute desk. Yeah. Yes. And so, like, I don't think it's mindless. Uh, well, I don't <laughs> think mindless is the word I want. Maybe. Yeah. Um, Not cheesy, but, like, it's just kind of there. You know, I get what you're like when lives. you said popcorn movie. I think that some it's a popcorn up, like, movie. Yeah, it is a popcorn movie. Yeah. And what's the difference between this and fucking Indiana Jones? I mean, not really. I mean, Indiana Jones. You know, you take uh, there's more factuality in this than there is in Indiana Jones. You know, I can. Uh, you know, people are like, uh, uh, what's uh, what's the Last Crusade? Yeah. I'm sorry, you don't see ghosts. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't don't see ghosts. Yeah. So you're not going to see the ghost at the end of uh, the, the Last Crusade or anything. 
you know, yeah. going through all the all all the the steps and the clues. It's the same thing. It's just a modern yeah. Indiana Jones yeah. in a way. Yeah, really. And this movie is better than Crystal Skull. I would agree. <laughs> Let's go through our five questions. Let us go through those five I questions. Go crazy before I start watching Pluto Nash again. <laughs> Why do you keep digging on Pluto Nash? <laughs> you know you like it. I do. You do? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, let's say what's your favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> Took you a while to get that. I, get there, right? <laughs> I know. You would think I would. I, there's, you know, I really love Bruce Greenwood in this movie. And that's just me, though. But and I'm, He's not in it that much. No. But what he is in it for. He eats that scene up, right? Yes. Like, oh, God, he, yeah, he like, does. He actually steals the movie right there from Nicolas Cage. Am I right? Yeah. Just by being him. Like, he, his character has no name. I actually think the best part of this movie is Travis Trent. You forgot that he Tr- was in this movie. You forgot to mention that. Travis, Travis Trent was? Travis Trent was at that party he was at. Yeah. Singing. I'm joking. Singing for the president. Um, but... <laughs> I really enjoyed Bruce Greenwood. That, you was know. it Travis Tritt or Randy Travis? Randy Travis. Did I say Travis Tritt? Or Randy said, yeah. Travis. I get those two confused because of the Trent thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, Randy Randy Travis. Um, I don't know. I really think he's my favorite part. I really also enjoy the fact that it just kind of... To me, I don't think it's the opposite of that. I think there's parts where you're like, oh, you're going from over here to over here. I like that it's a treasure hunt. Yeah. I've always enjoyed treasure hunts. Yes. You know, growing up, you're always like, oh, I can find a treasure. Like the whole, you know what I mean? You always yeah. want to be on a treasure hunt. I don't know. Yeah. What's your favorite part? Um, And I, uh, you know, I have, uh, I, I like the treasure hunt aspect of it, too. The mystery, the treasure hunt yeah. piece of it. Um. And so I like that aspect about both of these movies, about the first and the second I one. I saw this one first. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Yeah, you've seen the other one, though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I actually like the treasure hunt in the first one a little bit better. Okay. I think they do it a little bit better. Yeah. Um, you know, they. I think a lot of second movies feel this need to go to Europe. Yeah, why is that? Blade 2 and, like, all these other things. Weird, yeah. yeah. They always go to Europe, and I'm like, no, uh, but this one is fine. Like, the scene in France I thought was fine, um, and the, like, Buckingham Palace thing, I was kind of like, oh, okay, but see, those things, I don't feel as vested in those because they're not, like... They're not American. Yeah, and, like, yeah. it's it's not national treasure. Yeah. That's international it's treasure. international treasure. That is true. Yeah. It's international treasure. Um, but I think that... I do like that aspect of it. Like, I like, because I'm always like, ooh, what yeah. are they going to find I'm gonna next? I'm going to tell you the truth. This movie wasted Helen Mirren. It did. Oh, it, it criminally wasted Helen Mirren. Very much so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, let's move on to the next one then. So, uh, would you uh, reboot, continue, or cancel? I want to see a third one. I think these are fun enough. I think they make enough movie. I think, you know, like, people watch... The they make a hundred of those racing movies. What are those racing movies? Fast and, Fast and the Furious. Laborious. Right? Like yeah. why can't they make more of these? I think these are like th- these are nice family adventure movies. Agreed. And I think we can add Helen Mirren and have a little bit more with her. Yeah. And less of John Voight, to tell you the truth. Yeah. No, I'm fine with that. Um so Maybe it starts. Maybe it starts with like John Boyd's funeral, and he leaves <laughs> clues on something, and Helen Mirren has to like help him. Yeah, I don't know, but leave John Boyd out of it. No, I'm fine. I'd be fine with dropping Voight. Um, drop the Voight. Drop the Voight. Um, no. So, uh, I think I w- I I I want a third one. Yeah, I do too. I think continue, like. I think rebooting is silly. No, don't for reboot something it. like this, and I think that canceling—I I don't want that either. So no, I think well, no, it's so much fun. Like, yeah. look, 
It could be the third movie is whatever's on that page of 47 that he's helping with Bruce Greenwood. There we get more Bruce Green, Bruce Greenwood in it. Well, there the was there was well no I mean now if it's been so long. Oh, that's true. Well, I guess maybe he's retired now or he's the ex president. Yeah, there you go. Now he can go we, adventuring. We also, with them. like I also love the fact that we don't know he's a Democrat or a Republican. Yeah, no question. Yeah, there's n- it's nothing because that's that that's not what this movie is about. Yeah, so I like that. Um, but he could go adventuring with him now because he's hey. the ex president. I have, and they can just the whole time they just call him Mr. President. We yes. never learn his name. Never learn his name. Never once. And at the end. He's like, my name is Julian Flibblebottoms. Mm-hmm. President Flibblebottoms. That's why people We've voted for We've been through worse. Flibblebottom, you've been through worse. <laughs> um, but, oh, so, like, um, as late as, like, this summer, in, like, June or July of 2018, John Turtletop actually said that yes. they've still been working on it. Yes. Which... I, I could see that because Disney doesn't want to lose the, you know. I don't think Disney wants to lose this. I think that they, you know, yeah. I think they still have an audience for this movie. I do, too. I do, I too. Really I do. think it's good they pace it out. But, like, they want to make sure it's something unique enough that it's not just, like, uh, the same thing again. Why not have a trilogy of this? Yeah. Well, they said um, they're looking at it and saying, well, do we want it to revolve around whatever was on page 47? Or not. And so I'm like, do it. Yeah. Like, I, look, we've gone, like, beginning of, you know, American history. And then, like, we did it again, or, like, later in American history, but we went back to, like, pre-American history. Mm-hmm. Part of me is like, maybe this is one from the last, you know, 50 years or maybe. something like yeah. that. Or last 70 years. There you go. So, um... Do you think this movie stands on its own? Uh, no. I I would agree. I don't think it does either. No, because who's Abigail if you don't know it? Yep, and you wouldn't know like the thing about the house or where the they're house. living or like. Yeah. I mean, really, you wouldn't understand any I mean, of the stuff the that's going on. The fact that he writes a book based on on the first movie alone. Yes. Oh yeah, no, this doesn't stand up on mm-hmm. its own. Um, does it make you want to watch the first movie? Yes. Me too. Uh, yes, it makes me want to watch it. I don't know why, but uh, and you know what? Like I have said this over and over again. Put the movie on, go wash the dishes or do something, and come back. Don't do that to this movie. Just no. sit back, and like even if you're having a bad day, I don't care what. <coughs> just sit back and watch one of these movies because like it will kind of cheer you up a little bit. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because um, it's it's not like it's not harmful. It's not, it's not harmful. cynical. It's not cynical. It's not anything bad. Yeah. It's not. It, there's no point of view to it. It's just it's what it is. There's okay. So in the first movie, there's a scene when Sadusky manages to uh, capture Gates, and he's got the Benjamin Franklin bifocals on his desk. Oh yeah, with the document next to it. And he's tapping them so, like, the little lens goes up and it goes down and you see, like, the words change yeah. with it. And that's when Ben knows what the glasses are for. Every time that that part happens, I'm always like, oh, ooh, because I know, like, oh, he knows. He knows what's going on now. Yeah. Like, it, it, you know, and it's right there and there, everybody's so close to it. I love that scene. And every time I watch that, I love that scene. Yeah. And these movies are fun. They it's, just are. It's fun. Um, describe your experience in two words. I think I said, I think popcorn movie. Yeah. And yeah, that's my experience. The, the, like we said, these movies are meant to just be enjoyed. Yeah. Like just enjoy the movies. You know what I mean? There's yeah. There's nothing to them. You don't have to put that much thought into them. They spell out the mystery for you. You got to go, oh yeah, they're at the, you know... Uh, Statue of Liberty, or they're over here. Yeah, you know they make it familiar enough, but they don't. They don't have to like. They don't talk down to you, but they yeah. don't. They, but they don't talk up. You know, just it's just the right kind of. You know. Yeah. It, it doesn't pander to you. It just is what it is. So yeah. I would say popcorn movie. Hmm. I would say, 
national adventure. Okay. As well. Um, so, no, I mean, it's like, I love the adventure. And, like, it's not, yeah, it's treasure hunting, but I love the aspect of, like, exploring things from American history at the same time. Um, you know, and kind of taking it this way. Like, we're so used to movies that were about, um, Oh, you know, like, um, think of all the Indiana Jones things. It's like all these ancient civilizations or like, you know, these things that are from the distant, distant past. And, you know, this movie is really about America's, you know, oh, national treasure. <laughs> the But, you know, it's about stuff that deals with our history. And um, it's interesting that it's like far enough back, but really not that far. And so it's not like these ancient treasures it's treasures that are like have only been here for a short period hey it's 2018 almost 2019 i think it's time for another national treasure i think I agree. people will be okay they're fine with nicholas cage doing these movies they're not fine with nicholas if cage doing these weird movies they're fine with him doing these movies. let me when was the last when did this one come out oh i don't know um you're I'll putting me on the spot I Let me also grab our. We have these devices that are connected to us all <laughs> the time. And 2007. Was it 2007? So we're talking like over 10 years. So if the next movie comes out and he's got like a 10 year old sidekick, his kid helping him. Bullshit. Bullshit. I'd hate it. Do not do that. You don't think that's going to happen? I don't want that to happen. I don't want it to either, but do you think it's like going to Abigail happen? Like Abigail and him have a kid? And yes. Like, no, bullshit. Don't do that. Don't to keep the main cast except John Boyd. Leave him at home. Helen Mirren can be in it if she wants. It'll be his son, who's named Patrick after his late grandfather. <sighs> no. No. What if his name is Patrick Heaven's Gate? What about that? Heaven's heaven <laughs> Gate. <laughs> oh, Heaven's Gate. Yeah. I don't know. I say don't. But that's just me. Uh, but I do. I want a third one of this movie. So I do too. hopefully one day they'll, they'll have it. And uh, we can go watch it. So Yeah. I think you've been deuced on that episode yes. of uh, what do we got going up there, Jeremy? Or where can people find us, yo? You can find me at 3 o'clock in the morning watching Give Me a Break. <laughs> you can. That is where you frequently are found. Just mm -hmm. muttering to I yourself. I love Dale Carter. Give me a break. I shall deserve it. <laughs> uh, well, you can find us at the deucepodcast.podbean.com, uh, at Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes. Uh, make sure you're rating us on any of those services. Uh, you can also find us at uh, no phony network, uh, no phony network dot com. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at the Deuce Podcast, or of course on our Facebook page. Uh, make sure you like and follow us on there as well. So what, what have we got coming down the pipeline? It's going to be Thanksgiving soon. It is going to be Thanksgiving, and and we're sorry for the infrequency of a couple of these episodes, but we have some other things going on in we our do. lives, of in course. In our yeah. lives, we, we, we are. Yeah. Uh, I, haven't, I mean, I we, can yeah, we can share it. Yeah, we we got a house. We we did get a house. So and we are so, moving. Yeah, so we're going to be moving into our, our new studio here at some point. Yes. Um, And so we're going to get it set up with all of the bells and whistles and that kind of fun stuff. So we're kind of in the process of that. So we've been yep. kind of uh, MIA, you would say. Yeah, we wanted to do this one during voting, but uh, that didn't happen. Well, we got it, but we got it between voting we and Veterans it. Day. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So we got that, but uh, what are we doing? Are we doing something special for Thanksgiving? We are. Are we? Yes. Should we say? Should, should we? we just keep it hidden from people? I think we should just keep it hidden. We'll hit, keep it hidden, but hopefully you guys will love it. I'm sure you will because you'd be like, "What the hell is this?" Yes. So keep uh, uh, an eye out for that one. And remember, the sequel is king.